<laughs> well, you guys, it seems that Jack and I have found ourselves in a bit of a predicament. So we just washed downstream quite a ways with these floodwaters. It's a pretty, pretty roaring river. It's kind of, kind of strong. You don't want to mess around with the force of the water. But we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere and we're going to be forced to use what we have around us to try and survive. And we do have some stuff with us. It's like mosquito net. I have some zip off pants so I can put my pant legs on if it gets cold. As do I. Very fashionable. I like brought his Gerber knife. Some paracord. Paracord is very handy because if you cut it open there is seven other strands of rope in there, string, either one, so that's probably what we'll do. And then... We have... What's it called? We got a pot. A pot. A pot. So, pot that's our basic supplies. And we do have other stuff that you guys chose for us, uh, but we have that in a location where if we need to use it, we will. But we're gonna try our best to just make do with what we have. Unlike most survival shows, we're gonna be working together. Rather than being pinned against each other with our differences, we're gonna try our best to just, you know, make this work. So, we'll go ahead and first, it's very important to get your bearings. So we'll just hop up and take a look around. It's rocky all over the place. And it leads back into here some, uh, I guess, temporarily flowing little waterways when it floods that it'll really flow. But typically with survival, you got um, the four priorities in order, which are shelter, shelter, water, fire, food. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, use that in this situation. All right guys, we found this little secluded area back here and we're thinking this is where we're going to end up putting our shelter. We've got this little vine up here that we can use to our advantage and we're kind of out of the sun and away from the river for uh, flash flood purposes. Uh, we're kind of on this little elevated piece, which is nice. And yeah, it's a nice little area. Hopefully there's some fish stuck in some of these ponds because they're fairly small that we can maybe take advantage of them right there there's a tent there and inside that tent is all of the gear that you guys voted for us to have with us now we're going to try our best not to use all that gear or as little of the gear as possible and just roll with what we got and we'll see how that goes um, but inside is stuff like a camp stove toilet paper a water pump for cleaning out water and fishing line fishing hooks stuff like that but we'll see what we can manage with just the supplies we brought with us. All right, so since I'm from Oklahoma, I probably know what is bad out here. So like the dangers and hazards would be still water. So that means that mosquitoes will be all around here. And as you can also see, it's a lot of green grass and a lot of green trees. So that means that there's going to be some ticks. Also, since there's this water right here and there's a lot of like minnows in here, there could be water moccasins. We actually saw one earlier, so we're gonna really watch out for those venomous snakes. And yeah, that's pretty much all we have to worry about here. Also, we have to worry about flash flood warnings because as you can see, we're next to water and the river is over there somewhere. These two good pieces right here would be good because they have those Y's and then you can find like a stick to go over it and just the pressure of the mosquito net on each side should be good. So where do you want it snapped it? Right. I'll see if I can go find like a cross beam now. Okay. Well, that broke. Wow. Well, Do you need that? We got ourselves a one of these. <laughs> Yeah. 
take forever. So we are currently um, building the shelter. We decided to move it from down there up to here just because um, we have a better foundation right here with this big old tree. So we're going through with the stick and just clearing out some of the shrubbery like that. Just clearing out a little patch. Then you got the mud down here so we might cover this up with something or something or another. And then we're building the foundation and it's pretty sturdy. It's like cementing it in with all this mud. how to cushion it without getting ticks in there. I know, the ticks aren't all this crap. Alrighty, as you can see, this is what we have so far. Because you always want to have something between you and the ground, because you lose the most body heat from the ground. Alright, so I'm just kind of placing them there. There we go. So, right here, that's our pallet pretty much. You know, we're going to make it a lot bigger. But back for another load. And now we are going to be tying our support beams to the top of the support. And we're going to be doing that with the innards of the paracord. Grab that side. All right, shelter update. We decided to lower this main support down to here, and we've got it secured right there on the tree. And then we drape this across, so now we can put rocks under it to try and anchor down and ensure that nothing gets in in the middle of the night. And we do have a bit of wiggle room yet so we can still expand it a little more. So we have our shelter fairly established over there. And what's next is going to be, we're gonna start building the fire because we got water right there. All we need to do is boil it in order to purify it. So, what do you say we start building the fire? Start collecting wood. All right, while well Jack is breaking up some of that wood, I need to figure out how to make a bit of a bird's nest to catch a spark for the fin striker to start the fire. So, we're going to need to find some thinner materials. Um, I was looking at this vine here. It does have some dry-ish bark. I mean, there's some pretty good stuff. It's kind of the same consistency as like cedar bark. And this isn't poison ivy. That's good. The poison ivy looks like great fire starter, but I don't think you want to inhale that stuff. 
there's something in that tree making noise. And we've got lots of debris right here. Just little bits and pieces of grass. So we'll go ahead, grab some of that dry stuff. Okay guys, so what we are doing is Alec has made a little bird's nest. Look at that. <laughs> so what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to use the flint and steel striker, which is right here, and we're going to try and strike that with the, the bird's nest and light it on fire, get an ember, and then place it in our log cabin that we made. As you can see, we have already gathered our wood, so we are prepared. Um, and once we do that, we will get our water boiling so we can have some purified water. I'll bring it down a little lower. It's a leap hard. I don't know if anything will happen if you hit this with a spark, but I'm trying. Is it filming? Yeah, that's good. I broke open one over there and I didn't see anything, but you can grab the other one. Let's see if I can find a bird's nest in the meantime. So, on our journey to find bird's nests, we're just coming across these gourds. And on the inside of some of them, there's a mesh-like substance. It's kind of the meat of the gourd, but it's all dried out. So we're going to go ahead and just break some more open and see if we can find some dry stuff. See, there's some of that mesh stuff. This one's really kind of damp on the inside, though. We may have a winner. Is it moist? Yep. My instincts that the batteries, that silver pouch batteries are inside the tent, and when you take the spent battery out of the GoPro, put it somewhere separate so they don't get mixed up. Okay. It's rough. Do you have to be, get the spare batteries? I'll work on this. We're having trouble lighting the fire. Ah oh, man, I'm getting bit on the face. Alec is trying to light his hair. <laughs> Boy. <sighs> We've got so much kindling at this point. Mm -hmm. All right, so our next plan of action, we took some innards from the paracord, rolled it up, and it looks, looks like cotton. So hopefully it lights like cotton. Ooh. Oh. Almost. I you know you want to. <laughs> Being stubborn. So close. Oh my goodness. Oh my oh, god. god. Mm -hmm. This thing. <gasps> I don't know. 
Let's make some more. More. Oh. <laughs> this is not happening. Quit messing with me. <laughs> In my journey to find some kindling to start this fire, I found a ringneck snake and two box turtles. Look at that. Happy little family. <laughs> See if we can't get this fire started this time. Get that ready. Very frustrating. Everything is damp. Like all of this is just wet. All right, guys. So it is nighttime now, and we are in our very pitiful shelter. Uh, we should probably do something about it tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Our bug net's not working very well because uh, there's a lot of bugs in there. So. Um, Alec, get a blanket. I've got my hair. That should work. Oh, gosh. Okay, you guys, you can see the frame going along here. <laughs> and there's the net. And just on the other side of this is an entire chorus of chorus frogs. They're so loud. And there's a cotton mouth. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. And there's a cotton mouth outside. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't come inside. We've got rocks around the outside to try and hold things down so that nothing can get in. Yeah, we learned things today. Learned that this isn't as simple as we had figured to begin with. Especially with all this rain lately. It's just made things so wet. It's about impossible to start a fire. Yep. So everything's we're damp. Gonna have to figure out some other method to do this. And yeah, we're gonna have to amp up our shelter. And since we couldn't get a fire started, we couldn't get water and we couldn't get much for food. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna turn things around tomorrow. Make make this some then good. <laughs> yeah. mm. oh. Currently it is not. But luckily for us, we are in Oklahoma and there's going to be some storms rolling through tonight. Which means that we're going to get called out of here any second by our team to go to a stable shelter because I don't think this thing is tornado safe. What do you think, Jack? Uh, nah, not really. But we're going to give it a shot, try and get some sleep until we are called out of here for our own well-being. So, let's see how that goes. And that sounds like them. Thank goodness. Let's go. Let's go. I have no light. I cannot see. All right, you guys. Well, this is actually a tree frog. Oh, it's a tree frog? Mm -hmm. yep. All right, guys, so as you can see here, there's a little tree frog. When, he's, when he has these little sticky pads, and these are the guys that are making all those noises. <laughs> that was cool. cool. This one looks like a pug. That yellow. Okay, that's that yellow. Mm -hmm.
you guys remember, our shelter that we built yesterday wasn't exactly a five-star hotel by any means. Uh, or it was kind of just star. or a one-star. That too. At least we didn't have bed bugs. Well, technically, I mean there were bugs in the bed, but um, that's not the point. What is the point is that we're not going to have that shelter anymore because it was kind of just thrown together since we wanted to try and get some other things done on our agenda. But we went ahead and moved it. We have created a brand new shelter and this is a bit of an upgrade. So we had designed a bit or we designed an A-frame right there. As you can see, we've got a sticks laying along the back. We've got a bit of waterproofing with all this vegetation and we have a support beam right here. And then there's our mosquito net and there's actually room for two people. So this time we don't have to spoon, which is always a good thing. Next, we're going to try and make some fire because in order to uh, purify some water, we're going to need fire and we're kind of getting thirsty at this point because it's, it's warm out. And we've got our little teepee here with our bird's nest. We got some vegetation, dried vegetation off the roots right here. So hopefully this stuff will light up. I know everything back there was a bit damp. So hopefully some of this, this stuff isn't. I had a conversation with a frog. So I was sitting there, you know, uh, trying to flint nap a little piece of flint into an arrowhead so that I could try and, you know, use it on a fish or something, which was unsuccessful. It's not as easy as you'd think. It takes a lot. Um, but I was sitting there cracking away and it would squeak each time I'd hit it. So wait, 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 wait. And then I stop. And then about two feet away from me was wait, 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 wait. So I go back. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. And there's this little frog just having a conversation. So we went and talked about how bad Jack's hygiene is and it was a very good conversation. But I'm gonna pass you over to Jack now and he'll give you a little, little tour of the base camp. So what we did is we kind of dug some holes right here right here and we put these big beams right here into the ground filled it in put some rocks and then filled it with mud so it was very stable we did that over there too and then we had this cross beam right here so we could put we were originally going to do an a-frame kind of like a tent almost like a stereotypical tent but then we only did one side because that's just a lot of grass and a lot of more sticks um what we also did is as you can see right here is we laid these big ones down and then we tied them with the paracord that I brought as one of my items to these big sticks and we placed grass on there so rain can't get in. And then we have our mosquito net which was my second item and that should come in handy so we don't get bit by mosquitoes and other insects. Wouldn't happen to have a match, would you? We have finally got this fire going. It was long and painstaking, and mostly because everything was wet. It just made things really hard. We need to go ahead and make some of this water drinkable. So one of the items that I brought with was this pot here. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and find two sticks that are shaped like Y's, plant them on either side, put a beam across, and then hang a pot of water over so that it can begin to boil. And while it's 
starting to boil and heat up and everything, we're gonna go ahead and go out and try and catch some fish because fish pairs nicely with water, <laughs> I guess. I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna get this set up and then have some fun. so it doesn't start on fire, hopefully. Dear Lord Jesus, don't let it fall, please. <laughs> All right, guys. So now that we have a fire in our yeah, a fire in our water boiling, we're gonna try and catch some fish in this beautiful river right here. We're gonna try a couple methods. We're gonna try to like corral or push the fish towards each other and see if we can get it with our hands. If that doesn't work, we have spears and then we have this little gouge hook, which is like it's almost like this little kind of it's a little piece of wood that when they swallow it, it gets caught in the back of their throat and then you can easily pull them out. And if all those fails, we have some fishing hook. A fishing hook and line that we can use. So we're going to do that. We are going to try and actually fish with a fishing hook that Alec made and some paracord line that we stripped. So what we're doing now is we're looking on the ground for some night crawlers, some large night crawlers. So I have found two little teeny ones as you can see. And I'm kind of digging around this mole hole looking for them. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna try a different method of fishing. This here is a gorge hook. And what that does is you put the bait over it and when the fish swallows it, it gets stuck in their throat. So it's not really a catch and release method. 
But if you're gonna eat it in a survival situation anyways, then it doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and cast this out with a worm on it and tie a little rock for a weight because this is pretty swift water and see what happens. So what I'm gonna do instead of using the worms because with the gorge hook, the way that it's built, it's just kind of thick and you need to slide the thing over it. I'm gonna use this little frog that I found. Uh, he's still got some meat on his bones, so he's got some stank. There's two flies on his leg right there doing something they shouldn't be doing on camera. <sighs> Get out of here. So we're gonna go ahead and throw them in and catfish are very smell-oriented predators so they can smell nasty stuff like this and they'll go out and find it. And we've been seeing baby catfish in the shallows and I actually caught one with my hands and he, but he fell out because he's so tiny. And so we're gonna go ahead and try this and hopefully the parents are out here because we have seen some fish surfacing so give it a go. And if that fails, we'll just get a bigger worm. All right guys, so far we have our shelter, water, fire, and now we just need food. Uh, we've got the fishing line out at the moment, so hopefully luck plays out in our favor. I think there's something on it. Really? It's not on the stick anymore. Oh yeah, it has moved. I'm gonna check it. Oh yeah, that line's, that line's moving. There might be a fish, we might be in luck. <laughs> I mean, the line sure looks like it's moving. Hopefully that's not just the Nada. Nothing. Just a scare. Means that something took the frog. Um, but let's go ahead and drink some water, I guess. Because <laughs> we're kind of in need of it at this point. We're going insane. Even though we did boil it for quite a few minutes, I think we're just gonna play it safe and go ahead and pass it through the filter as well. So this is another thing that you guys had voted on was a water filter. And these things are great if you're out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we could just pop it in the river and pump it, but you know, last thing you want is Giardia. So we're gonna go ahead and pump it through here. Pop it in there. Pretty good. Yeah. Tastes like water. It's good. It's a little warm. <laughs> oh, might need to do something about this flooring. Oh. I mean, it's not that bad if you just stay still. At least this one, we can stretch our feet out and we don't have to spoon. Yeah. Well, we accomplished quite a bit today, don't you say? Yes. I actually built a decent, sustainable shelter. Yep. Cover it all. We'll cover three of the four bases. We got shelter, fire, and water. Now we just need to get food. Which is very hard. It's weighing on us now. Might need to start eating crickets and grasshoppers. <laughs> Edibles are not present in this area. Yeah. We got greenbrier, honeysuckle, that's about it. Yeah. A few little bites here and there. But we need some protein and some fats, so hopefully the fishing will pull through and we can get a catfish or something. We just threw out... Like the hook worm. again, yeah, with a worm on it this time. Hopefully they actually eat it and don't chew on the leg like the frog. Yep. <sighs> Other than the food, I think it's going pretty well. Yeah. Nice spot in the river. Yeah. There's always little things you can nitpick with the location that you're stuck in, but this one is fairly nice. I mean, the only issue so far really has been the wet. It is wet. <laughs> and we're looking at some more storms. All right. Good night, everybody. See you in the morning. It is morning, and it is time to eat. Got a few other ideas, though, for fishing. Yep. Wilson reminded us that we can use our mosquito net kind of as a little seine almost and see if we can corral some minnows into it. Might give that a go. The thing with the gouge hook that we've been using is that... 
it's losing a lot of bait. It's kind of difficult to get the bait on and then when it's in there it might be falling off with the current. The fish might be just not swallowing it and that's the issue. It's a very temperamental little hook. Uh, we're gonna, oh there's some fish jumping right now. We're gonna go ahead and use the net. We've got our fire smoldering, smoldering so we can go ahead and light that back up when it needs to be lit and back up. We got a few, probably like 10 maybe. That's an eater. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so right now Alec is out doing a one last minnow check in the little creek behind us. We have three good sized minnows. We're gonna cook those up and have a little snack, dinner apparently, or whatever you wanna call it, more of a snack, but yeah. So we've got our two skewers here, Jack, would you go ahead and do the honors of removing the leaves from the skewers? We just want like this main branch. Yeah. And the reason they're green is because we want ones that have moisture inside of them so they don't light on fire while we're cooking. And today on the menu, unfortunately, are these little guys. We didn't have too much luck fishing and somehow all the minnows that we caught earlier free willied their way out of the enclosure. Um, if we had all those guys, we probably would have done minnow soup, but because we only got two big ones left and a little tiny one for Wilson, we are going to go ahead and just skewer them and roast them over the fire. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove them. Come on, little guys. And dispatch them. So how we're gonna do that is just go ahead, hit them in the head real hard. Take the knife out. Cut just below the throat. That's the bloodline, so blood should start pouring out there. And then we're going to go down the belly, so from the anus up. And we're just going to go ahead and pull out all of the bad stuff. So this guy is all prepared. You can see his belly's open, his scales. You can scratch them off with your fingernail. into the mouth. And throat into the body. That little guy is good to go. Unfortunately, we didn't get to find very many wild edibles, so yeah, the we didn't get any of that. Wild edibles just don't seem to be in bloom yet found some mustang grapes but they were still in pollen form we found honeysuckle that's not too much of a wild edible it's more of a little treat uh, a few green briar tips here and there make to just make they're good just to hold you over we've been snacking on those uh, found a few little wild blackberries but nothing substantial and yeah unfortunately the wild onions are kind of going out of season at this point i know mm -hmm. Earlier in the year, there were tons of them, like a month ago. 
it's all over the place. It smelled like onions everywhere you go. So one thing that's really stuck out to me is that little nicks and scrapes just don't heal. It's really kind of irritating because like I stepped on a stick and it stabbed my toe. And it's about a centimeter long, not my toe, the, the scrape. That would be a weird toe. <laughs> but, um, but it just doesn't heal because you're, you keep breaking it open and also there's so much bacteria and also you're getting it wet all the time. We try and not get our boots wet by walking in the water with them so we, we go barefoot every once in a while. But how about you? What's your difficulty so far with this difficulty? challenge? Difficulty? Probably how hard it was to catch fish. Yeah, that's... I thought it was going to be a little easier with the worms and such how great of a spot we had, but it was very, very hard. Nothing seemed to bite the worms, and the thing that kind of makes me mad is all of our fish jumped out. Yep. And they're gone. On a personal note, 48 hours without Mountain Dew or Fruity Pebbles, it's amazing what it does to your body. It's been going into withdrawals. Yep. I don't know Toxin. if it's good or not. Talking in your sleep. I think this is probably good. Yep, very cool. Now, doesn't that look like a primitive meal right there? All right. It's looking mostly meat. Now, these guys do have bones, but they're so small. Not even going to be able to tell. Now, let's try it. Tastes it like, tastes like the water we drink. Tastes like sardines to me. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend eating them, but if it's the only thing. Yeah, it tastes like sardines to me. It's pretty good. I eat sardines at home. I don't. These crunches. It's a little unsettling. <laughs> little bones here and there. Thought I wouldn't be able to <laughs> tell, but... I can tell. Wilson, do you still want your fish? No? Alright. Not surprising. Mm, it's not the best. It tastes like dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, as with all good things, adventures do come to an end. Uh, we've currently got the sun setting right over here, and we've currently got a gar who has been a pain in the butt, really. Just to put it frankly, this little guy has been a pain in the butt. He keeps hopping up here while we're sitting here starving, eating minnows, and he won't let us catch him. It's, it's really disgusting. Fish these days, just so rude. Unfortunately, the wild edibles haven't really played out in our favor, but more than anything, the weather hasn't played out in our favor. These shelters aren't meant to withstand tornadoes, so unfortunately, it's been a bit of um, a frightening adventure, but it definitely would be fun to do again. Yes, different spot without scary weather. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a real learning experience. You know, it's not as easy as they make it out to be on TV. Well, I'm sure it's not very easy. It's not very, it's not... <laughs> it's very hard. Yes, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's not as easy as you would think. Because, I mean, I watch all these guys who go out and they catch animals left and right and throw them on the fire, eat them. It looks delicious. So fun. But food has been the real struggle this this adventure we've got our water source obviously right here been able to purify it with the fire the fire was a bit of a difficulty but the shelter went up pretty well i'm actually pretty proud of that we did a good job the tree frogs one thing that i wish you could vote for was earplugs because we really needed them at night oh my gosh it's like a constant alarm it was alarm a clock. frog concert of things that we can understand it's like going to a concert in a different language a frog language a frog language but you guys, that's gonna do it for this adventure. So, so until, until next time, stay, stay wild! Well done!